Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks you, every, thank you all for joining us today in this important webinar. Joining us, Ms. Yasmina Gavorvich, who is a trainer and a life coach that are joining us today to provide and address this important topic, self-care and emotional resilience. Um, Ms. Yasmina, uh, I'll give you the, uh, the mic to introduce yourself to the attendees. Thank you so much. My name is Yasmina, as I'm beautifully introduced. I'm coach, trainer, I have a psychology background. Uh, I'm also doing uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, I'm doing a uh, Reiki and lot of other, lot of other activities. And I'm so, so, so grateful to create this collaboration with Friends of Cancer Patients and to be honored to do this webinar for whoever is joining us. So I'm born and grew up in Bosnia Herzegovina, where I studied psychology. Then I had opportunity to work for international huge company and travel the world and receive international experience with so many people with so many background where I fell in love with everything, considering the well being, everything with personal growth, and I personally experienced so much benefit from every techniques that I'm using that I seriously wanted to share it with everyone who are willing to hear and to listen. So besides, besides NLP, coaching, training, I also am a meditation teacher, I am a mindfulness practitioner, and I am happy to share some of these techniques with you during this webinar. Uh, here I shared some information of my Insta Instagram webpage where you can see some testimonials and my email. And uh, that's it about me. If you would like to have any more question after the presentation, then I'm happy to answer any. And yes, uh, I will do my best to make this interactive. So if you would like to join, you can uh, write down in a chat box. I think I am able to see it. If not, then I am sure that I will be, uh, that the message will be transferred by the, by the team. So why is emotional resilience important? Especially in these times for the past year, it's been challenging for everyone, for everyone throughout the world. I personally uh, got five months stranded outside of the UAE in Cambodia. And uh, regardless of how much I was teaching self-care, how much I was uh, teaching importance of understanding yourself, these five months were such a profound experience for me. And in these five months, I managed to uh, understand the topic and experience the topic even further. And in, with this experience, I got desire to share this with everyone and anyone that I am working with and beyond. So with emotional resilience, it is actually the art and understanding of that of living in the circumstances, regardless of what they are and raising ourselves above the circumstances and using our skills and abilities and all the resources to direct ourselves to the best version of ourselves. And having said this, I have to mention importance of thoughts in this. Even though for important of thoughts, importance of thoughts and uh, how our mind works, it could, uh, it could take one hour to talk about this. I will do my best to share some, some very, very valuable information. So how our mind works that our thoughts create our emotions. And I'm not sure how many of you, you know that there is around 70,000 of thoughts a day that happens to us average. It goes from 40,000 to 70,000. It can go up to 120,000 thoughts a day if there is anxiety or panic attacks or some other conditions. This means that in average, we experience around two and a half thousand thoughts an hour. So only 5% of these thoughts we are aware. 95% are the same thoughts from the day before and the day before and the day before, they are habitual. And evolutionary, 85% of these thoughts that are repeating are actually negative. 
because our brain is programmed towards searching for problems, searching for the ways to protect us. So technically, if we are not aware of it, it can it is programmed to work uh, kind of against us in these new in this new age. Why is this? Because the thoughts are creating the emotions, and there is something which is called mechanism, uh, fight or flight mechanism. And this fight or flight mechanism is actually evolutionary from when we were, you know, being chased by uh, lions or some animals. It is the mechanism stress coping that is activating our energy in a form that we are ready to fight or to run away. So our energy is going to extremities uh, and our digestion is shutting off. Our frontal cortex is also shutting off. So we do not have access to our intelligence. Uh, our immunity is lowering down and we are ready to fight or run away. So for the short term, for the short term stress uh, danger, it is very good mechanism because we are to react very fast. But what has happened throughout the time that even on a school exam, even on a mother-in-law or any, any threat, this mechanism kicks in and gets activated on and on and constantly. And for the long-term stress coping, it is very, very, very deteriorative, de deteriorating for our body. Because as I said, the digestion is shut off, adrenal stress hormones are working heavily and uh, our immunity is endangered and as well our capacity to make uh, good judgments for whatever situation we are dealing dealing with how to connect this with thoughts so even thinking about something creates emotion meaning if we are thinking about the event that we are afraid or that we are uh, that we are um, previously experienced negative and then created the generalization and we're thinking that every time we experience this event it's going to be negative we are already pre-framing our mind we are already pre-framing our body to feel fear and to feel stress meaning we are not at our best with to cope and deal with these situations in the future now for why importance of emotional intelligence and emotional resilience is brought in a picture more and more in the past few years, especially in the last year. Because in a very, very, very wide way, the emotional resilience and emotional intelligence, it means being able not to be affected, but to cope with the situations in our life, being that stress, being that uh, hard situation on us, sadness, grief, in a way that is more productive, that we uh, learn something, that we find the techniques that so we can deal with it in a much, much more resourceful way. And this does not mean, so this does not mean absorbing the stress around us, accepting the situation as it is and allowing ourselves to, to drown with it. It means that we, Im we implement on a daily basis a certain techniques that we implement a certain or develop a certain behaviors that will allow us to develop skills and to, de to develop habits that are that help us cope with situations that happens on a daily basis and create new habits. Now, the five important elements, pillars of emotional resilience for me, they're all uh, interconnected now, and each and every one of them are important by itself. I will be focusing mostly on mindfulness and self-care uh, throughout the rest of the presentation. However, it's important to mention each and every one of them. Uh, firstly, our purpose. It's very important to sit. A lot of us are going throughout life and not understanding uh, what our true purpose in life is. Uh, what are we here for? for? Uh, living life uh, with all the things on a daily basis and uh, experiencing same things again and again and again. Uh, social media has a big influence on this because we're constantly bombarded with so many different things, so many different materials that we don't even have time to sit and think of 
how would we like our life to, to look like? From all of those uh, habitual fearful thoughts, from all of those uh, habitual uh, stress situation and experiencing stress, uh, a lot of time we do not find ourselves dreaming and uh, thinking and most importantly, allowing ourselves to understand what is that that we would like to do in our life? How can we contribute to community? How can we do more for ourselves? Uh, I personally feel lucky that I found my way to contribute and to enjoy at the same time so much what I'm doing. Uh, I used to have a lot of uh, issues with uh, um, panic attacks, uh, depression episodes, uh, I was unable to communicate with people, I was unable to express myself, I was fearful of everyone's and anyone's uh, opinion and a judgment. And throughout the years of self-work and throughout the years of doing what I am doing now, it's just helped me to develop myself in person and I just made this, um, I made this work my life. It, and this is one of the most important things to create in life besides positive relationships. So now I am, uh, I'm not sure how much you are aware, but uh, there is a Japanese a uh, place, Okinawa, which has over 400 uh, people that are over 100 years uh, old. And uh, Japan has the longest uh, life expectancy, expectancy in general. And in Okinawa is 83.7 uh, years average life expectancy. And they studied these people, they studied these people over 100 years. And it's not only that they have this uh, this beautiful age, it is that they are uh, very uh, vital. They have a good health. Uh, they are free from chronic diseases such as cancer. Uh, they are working still up till up till the day that uh, they they leave the this place. They are having a beautiful beautiful uh, positive relationship. So they value positive relationships with family, with community. It is very important for them to uh, sit and eat all together. It is very important for them to, to work together. If there is any issue that happens in a community or in a family, it is very important for them to resolve it in a most beautiful, in a most beautiful way and a most productive way. Uh, see, I do relationship workshops as well, and what I witness with the most of couples and in most of relationships, being that friendships, being that uh, marriages or, uh, or romantic relationships, is that people focus on who is right and not how to actually resolve the problem in the best possible way. We are focusing more on competing with a partner, with a friend, with everyone around us in a work environment, whether, rather than finding a mutual solution that might suit uh, you know, both parties or, or, or all parties if it's a corporate environment. Why is this, uh, why is this important? It's because uh, anger that comes from the, or frustration and uh, fear and stress that comes from uh, fighting each other is a very, very heavy energetically on the body itself, whether working on a solution together besides the solution, it brings the suiting feeling, suiting sensation, feeling accepted, feeling part of the community, being able to express, being able to be yourself together with a community, with, with family, with parents, with, with your partner and everyone. And it is amazing, you know, uh, we all study and people in general, it's, we go to school to study maths or uh, then we go to, to high school and we learn so many subjects and then we go to universities. And I remember I had psychology back uh, in high school 
and the subject was just learning a few definitions. And I never thought I would study psychology based on that subject if I didn't have a personal, uh, personal interest in it. And uh, the reason why I started was statistics, actually. I liked math. So people, in general, focus on education in every subject considering the work. However, if you ask any individual what is the most important in their life, most of them, when they sit and think, they will say that it's either family, either their partner, either their children, and even that these relationships are most important in our life, the least we, what we do is invest in developing social skills. I mean, learning them, uh, learning emotional intelligence. And this is the intelligence that can be learned as well as social intelligence. You don't get born with it. You learn it, you teach, you, you're taught by people who already experienced and uh, by people who already have a certain techniques. It takes some time, it takes a bit of effort, uh, it has to be regular. However, it gives you so much benefit on every aspect of life that is very, very much worth it. Now, besides this, uh, self-awareness is very important because a lot of us, as I said, we learn from surroundings, from social media, from uh, our family, from neighbors. Uh, who are we supposed to be? Who are we told that we need to be? And uh, rarely we sit and ask ourselves, what do I really want? And sometimes it is uh, what you really want is not fitting the, the surroundment. And what happens is that we repress it. So now before self-care, we need to understand first, uh, what are we? What do we truly want? So step before self-care is actually self-discovery. And about that, I will be talking uh, in, a later, in a later phases a bit more. So just to mention mindfulness and uh, meditation, which is included in this. A lot of people are actually a lot of people are actually afraid of meditation. They say that they cannot do it. Uh, it is hard. It is not possible. When they sit, all thoughts are running. And one important thing to mention is that is how things are supposed to be. Meditation is called meditation practice with a reason. You don't start and you're amazing at it. All the, all the thoughts disappear and go away. As I mentioned, there is approximately two and a half thousand thoughts thoughts in an hour. What happens with the meditation is you become aware more of it. So before you were aware of about 5% only. So as you're driving, thoughts are happening. As you're cooking, thoughts are happening as you're, and you do not notice them. Unless some, some thought creates a very, very, very high emotion. Then we notice it. When we sit in a meditation, we notice most of these thoughts. So hence, this is why we think that we're not meditating right. Uh, but throughout the practice, throughout the regular practice and the certain skills, certain ways, certain uh, body posture or the body alignment, what happens is that we become better and we also get more benefits out of these experiences. So now, I would like to ask, I'm not sure will I see the answers, uh, how, many, how many of participants think that the self-care is selfish and why? You can write in a chat box. Oh, I just opened the, the, the chat box that I see, yes, the emotions can affect and do affect overall mental health. Uh, one of the participants uh, shared, I will explain a bit more after, but for now, basically, whichever emotion we feel, there is a physical reaction on it. And uh, stress, grief, sadness, anger, suppression, judgment, self judgment is very, very heavy on the body. And then when the emotions get stuck because we are not used to and we are not allowing ourselves to feel these emotions, emotions get stuck and then we get to have some physical experience such as nausea or, uh, or some pain or the hands, sorry. 
Beautiful. That is why the, the certain therapies as a pressure points or physical activities or massages or Reiki work very well in the overall emotional and mental well-being. Let me just see. Mm. Okay, so what I read so far it is that self-care can be selfish if uh, if one only thinks about themselves and disregard the beloved ones. So uh, there is this e e there is even the the whole uh, the whole group of people that are now uh, focusing and spreading the self care is not uh, selfish. It is self care is not selfish movement. Something like that. Uh, why is this important to understand? Uh, we are raised. Uh, yeah, self care is an expression of the self love. As we are raised, we are all, I mean, all the people and all the clients that I communicated with, uh, they tell me that they are raised in a way to be nice to others, uh, respect uh, respect everyone around, respect elderly, um, you know, love your neighbors, be kind to others. And rarely, rarely they, they heard from their parents, be kind to yourself. And even more important is, that they witnessed their parents sacrificing a lot for them, meaning sacrificing a lot of their experience, sacrificing a lot of their, their work, working hard for them. And the children, as in children before they become adults, they're actually learning by experience, learning by modeling in the, that age of life. So what, what happens is we rarely learn self-care and we rarely learn that the self-care care is good. And if there is someone who is focusing on themselves or giving themselves um, a bit more than, than it is a standard, what happens is that they usually from people around get judged verbally. So we learn that the self-care is selfish. However, it is quite opposite. Uh, we cannot deliver our best to others if we are not at our best. Uh, we cannot give what from the empty cup. Uh, there, is, there is this uh, beautiful metaphor from even in an airplane, you know, when they are saying in a case of emergency, everyone first use the oxygen mask for themselves and then give it to children and to others. Because if we do not make ourselves feel vital, energized, positive, peaceful, we are not able to provide a beautiful experiences, moments, or care, or anything for people around us, being that family, being that friends, and absorbing, absorbing, I mean, hearing certain situations, hearing certain problems for other, from others, make us drained because we are not caring of ourselves initially. And self-care is actually the biggest expression of a self-love. And when we truly love ourselves, when we truly deeply love ourselves and care of ourselves, we are able to love everyone around us and anyone around us. And also cope with the situations that life brings us in a much, much, much better way, much more resourceful way. Uh, it must have uh, happened for everyone that on a day where you felt especially positive, some same situation uh, didn't seem, similar situation didn't seem same burdening, like when you do not feel at your best. So when your cup is full, when you uh, had a nice meal, nice nurturing meal, meal when you had a walk in a nature, when you uh, listen to something that is positive or your favorite music, uh, whichever way, it is best for you to charge to charge yourself to inspire yourself to be the best version of yourself then you are able to actually share the best version of yourself with your surroundment and with others so the self care uh, also teaches you about you about what you can offer what you can provide and your value to yourself and to others it is intentional time it can be even five minutes a day or, or, or 10 minutes throughout the day, two minutes at a time that you bring focus to yourself. It can be even, for, even seconds, but on that one more on a mindfulness that you can focus on yourself and focus inwards and allow yourself to relax and to 
express whatever is happening inside of you, whether suppressing that most of us do, which is also leading to, um, to a lot of issues, emotional issues, mental health issues, uh, physical diseases, and uh, many other like panic attacks. It is most of the panic attacks happen from fear of future and not expressing what we are actually truly feeling inside. So now, also, why is that? Why emotional resilience and emotional intelligence, the techniques that are provided there, are very important? Because if we do not have and do not practice in certain techniques that uh, help us express and help us communicate with people, with partners, with groups, what happens is when we want to express this uh, fight or flight situation doesn't, from not knowing what to say and how to say it, doesn't allow us to express the right way. So we do either, um, some people get angry, some people cry, some people uh, go, go completely silent and are not able to talk. Whether if you practice, uh, certain communication skills and if you uh, practice these these things that I will mention in a future it will allow your mind to calm down it will allow you to become more resourceful and to receive even more information and also uh, to find your own way to learn to deal with any situation any conversation in your life in a future so uh, with self-care activities and this is very personal meaning I, I could enjoy heavy lifting. I mean, I don't, but I could enjoy heavy, heavy weight lifting and then someone else can enjoy the um, walk in the nature. And if I'm trying to set my set of beliefs, what self-care is to the person that enjoys the, the nature, walking in nature, and this is what charged them and they try to do my way, it can just uh, have an opposite result meaning this person that is charged by enjoying the walks in the nature or yoga or tai chi, which I actually do, it, it, it would be depleted or even more stressed by doing a heavy lifting or whatever it is. Uh, you have people who like to run, you have people who like to read a book, you have people who like to uh, have a silent moment for themselves. This is why the self-discovery is very important because self-discovery is and self-awareness is a step before self-care we have to understand and know what we truly enjoy what brings us our energy up what makes us more peaceful but in that true true way uh so i'm talking healthier versions of of things here not comfort things what makes us uh, more aligned with our thoughts what makes uh, us more in peace and more able to to spread our light everywhere and then when you you can write down these things sometimes it takes time because sometimes it takes time most sometimes uh, a lot of clients that i work with they are never asked what do they actually truly enjoy so when you sit when you sit to write down what you actually truly enjoy it takes a bit of time to it is as if you should shock your body now you suddenly got asked this question so it's not that easy to but when it starts you discover part of yourself that is uh, that is that is so beautiful when it's expressed a lot of the times these are activities that you used to do as a child or you like to do as a child but just like a small adult versions of that activities and uh Basically, the self-care, and this is uh, this is proven in a lot of in a lot of researches, it boosts physical health because part of the self-care. Now there is uh, there is a lot of tips of activities to do for self-care, uh, listening to the soothing music, dancing a bit, walks in the nature because you get to have uh, vitamin D, so you go to the sun regularly. Um, some breathing exercising in a more exercises in the morning very important thing is actually to avoid social media and avoid any uh, technology first 20 minutes in the morning so when we woke up when we wake up our mind is still in a 
bit of blurry state. And then as we wake up, there is this uh, few seconds, few moments or a minutes of time before it kicks in in habitual, you know, the 95% of thoughts that are same as yesterday and the doings, the actions that we are used to uh, do every day. So these first moments in the day, in the morning are the best to actually change something. So if you prepare it the night before, and then the next day you wake up in the morning and have a small notebook or a small note to yourself, uh, something beautiful, like uh, whatever it is, being that I love you, being that uh, what would you like to do beautiful for yourself today? And a uh, few things like stretch or do two minutes of breathing, which I will demonstrate later, whoever would like to show whoever would like to try a uh, few minutes or brief of breathing and then mindfully focusing on uh, brushing your teeth having a warm glass of water it is like throughout the sleep we dehydrate so it is very important to have minimum one glass it's best two glasses of water in the morning if you can so in order to change the habit it takes as they say 21 to 40 days to change a habit meaning every day you do it, you do this thing in order for your unconscious, subconscious mind to, to develop this new habit. Unless you use techniques with the NLP and then it goes faster, it can be literally from one session. But it is very, very, very easy to do it from your side as well if you put a reminder. And also a beautiful technique is to wake up in the morning and find three things in the morning what you are grateful for before you touch your social media, before you touch your emails, because what happens is uh, when we go on a social media, our focus goes on so many things at the same time. Like as we scroll, our focus goes on commercials, on the news and whatever is happening. There is a lot of things now regarding the COVID. So it is, it is those thoughts are getting focused on the fears or random things that are not something that we would like to implement and change in life. Whether if you do a few things for yourself early in the morning, it can be even five minutes. It doesn't have to be 20 minutes. Uh, when you do five, few things in the morning for yourself and then maybe even listen to something that will motivate you to, um, to develop some new beautiful self-care routine throughout the day or work routine or something that will improve and enhance your health, your, health, your overall well-being, your, your, your mental well-being, your mental health. Uh, this is the best to be done in the morning and five minutes before you go to sleep. So instead of random thoughts, you write down five things that you are grateful for or that you would like to have even more of in your life. But the gratitude works the best. It can be grateful for air that we are breathing, water, very, very, very simple thing. What I tend to understand is that um, the more simple it is, the, the, the stronger I can, I can feel it for myself. And when you implement these simple things on a daily basis, what happens is that you take your life in your hands and those 95% of thoughts that are habitual starts to change and you become more aware. So it's not just 5%, you become throughout every day more aware of your thoughts. And those 85% of the negative thoughts are not anymore habitual, but what happens is that now you are in charge of your thoughts more, you're in charge of your brain, you're connected more with your heart and you are creating the different reality. Why am I saying different reality? Because our focus, actually determines how we experience the reality. Believe it or not, there is 400 billion bits of information coming towards us in a second. Meaning, uh, as we experience reality like this, there is 400 billion bits of information. And I know you're thinking who counted this? <laughs> Me too, but they, they basically, who it's it's you can find the the information it's proven 400 billion bits of information in a second and as they say as they compare it it is more than if you would count any grain of sand on any beaches uh in a world 
it is more that is coming through us. However, we are consciously processing only 2000 of these information, meaning whatever is coming towards us is we are processed 2000. And these 2000 that we process, that we perceive is based on uh, our thinking, based on quality of our thinking, based on our inner state. So this means that when we are in a non-resourceful state of being stressed out, of being um, in a fearful mode, uh, being, uh, I'm not saying you should never be sad, but focusing on, on being even more sad, the information that we perceive from most of the events are going to be connected to that thought. Hence, when you change, your focus from the early morning, you will start experiencing life in a better way. And when you experience life in a better way, in a lighter way, in a more positive, your overall well being reacts. And your overall well being is actually uh, becoming more uplifted. Uh, your energy is, um, is lighter, and everything becomes a tiny bit more easy and then with the time it becomes a lot more easy to do being that taking care of yourself giving something nice to yourself or helping others and understanding how to support others in the best possible way with giving them love giving them care um, non-judgmental and spreading your beautiful energy towards them and the uh, it's very important knowing this, that in a self-care to know personal boundaries. So personal boundaries are uh, something like when you feel very, very, very drained or sad or, um, or um, stressed out or not at your best or tired and someone asks you for uh, help or a friend asks you to have a chat about something for I don't know how many times personal boundary would be actually expressing that you yourself are not at the best state now to offer the support the way that they actually would need to receive from your side that, that as soon as you are able to give them the support that you would like to, you will come back to them. A lot of people find this uh, rude because we are so, so, so raised or selfish uh, because we are so raised to be there for others that is not, it's not easy to re-raise yourself in order to take care of your, well, your emotional well-being uh, before others. And uh, when you are, I have to repeat and come back to when you are taking care of yourself in a, in a best possible way, the attention, the care, the, the appreciation that you will share with, with others, it's much higher, higher frequency. Your energy is more uh, shining, it's more giving, and the help that they will receive, it's going to be much more valuable than from the state where you were, you know, emptied yourself. So it actually makes you a better caregiver, a better friend, a better family member. And one important thing with parents, uh, taking care of yourself and taking time for yourself to, to deal uh, with a life in a better way, it teaches children to care about themselves. Because children do not learn from what they're told they learn from what they see, what they witnessed. They learn from modeling. And if they do not witness, uh, if they witness a parent who is not uh, giving time for, for, who's not taking time for themselves, a parent who is not doing anything throughout the day to feel better, to feel more healthier, to feel, uh, to feel more energized, more loving, they will not learn by themselves to act like that. Hence why it's very, very, very important to, to learn how to care of them, of yourself. And uh, it, is, it is a journey for, for, all of ourselves, for all of us. It was a journey and it still is for me because uh, I love what I do. 
So for myself, the problem was that I preferred my work than a lot of other activities, whether no matter how much you work, uh, how much you love what you do after some time, after one year and a half, you will experience the burnout if you do not value some other aspects of, of you, whether that being fun, spending time with family, spending time with friends. And uh, the last year and year before that, but especially past year was very, very um, well, beautiful. I experienced a beautiful growth on this aspect, physically, mentally, uh, at every point. And regarding the spirituality, it is very good doesn't matter which religion uh, you follow or you don't follow the spiritually it is connecting connection of you and whatever you believe in some uh, something that is higher than you and nurturing this relationship always helps in enhancing your energy always helps in your uh, overall well-being uh, helps in uh, trusting yourself and in yourself even more it helps with uh, work in relationships and the very 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 important thing is asking for help a lot of us are not good in asking for help unless we are in a very, very, uh, you know, low space in our lives, or we do not know how to properly, properly ask for help, especially for like in a lot of countries in a lot of cultures, uh, men and even women are actually raised not to ask for help, uh, that they can do everything by themselves. And there is a lot of uh, now a lot of women that are very strong very powerful they are mothers they are uh, having their own business or they are working they're organizing everything in a house and uh, receiving even when they ask receiving help is not easy for them i mean my uh, my mother is like this and it is beautiful it was beautiful for me to witness the transition of her being able to ask for help and allowing someone else to do something for her and enjoying that. Uh, we need to, the whole point of this is to allow ourselves to re-raise ourselves to a version that is going to enjoy life more in whichever circumstances there is, in whichever situation there is, so we can be more resourceful for um, our family members, for our friends, so we can in experience more beautiful things in our life. And most importantly, for overall health. Because this body of ours, this mind of ours, this uh, emotions uh, that are happening, they're all um, interwined in that way that every part and every aspect needs to be satisfied, being that physical activity, as I mentioned, it doesn't need to be something, it can be uh, stretching, it can be dancing, it can be uh, walking in a nature, whatever you prefer. If you wish, you can share in a chat box, uh, you can share in a chat box, uh, what do you do for uh, actual self-care? Exactly. Sorry, I just read that. I just read something from the chat box. And yes, the life is not easy on us. And uh, with all the expectations from others, yes, we can feel exhausted at the days. And this is uh, why I am emphasizing the importance of these, you know, five to 20 minutes a day of focusing on yourself, on ourselves. Because when we experience this deep connection with ourselves and taking care. And I think there's biggest expectation most of the time we have out of ourselves because we are learned this, we are raised and learned and the society wants us to all to be perfect. There is a lot of uh, media, there is a lot of media, uh, you know, posters of how we're supposed to look like, how we're supposed to feel like. There's positive thinking movement. Honestly, even though I am, uh, I am talking about importance of, uh, you know, thinking towards what you want, thinking positive, even more important is to actually acknowledge when you are not, when you don't uh, feel well. 
So when you don't feel well and allowing yourself not to feel well without the judgment of it, and also knowing techniques, how to release that emotional charge, energetical charge, and how to recharge yourself with a more suiting ways is crucial in, in this aspect. So a lot of things in social media, um, positive thinking movement, you're not, not, you're not, a, you're not uh, supposed to think anything but positive is not good for us as well. And um, we are kind of feeling pressured. This used to be my, also my thing. I was pressured to, to think positive. I was pressured to uh, be su successful since I'm teaching success. And uh, then when you, like throughout the time, it just happens that practicing these, it just happens that you wake up or I'm not necessarily wake up in the morning. I mean, wake up and understand that all of this uh, is not really relevant, but only how you feel uh, inside of you. I, I believe that you witnessed some people that are, um, you know, from rural areas and elderly, and they were the wisest people ever just by being themselves, enjoying life, focusing on life, and, uh, you know, spending a lot of time in, in nature. And I strongly believe that this is for the simplicity of uh, the thoughts. I'm not saying this is not smart. I'm saying simplicity, focusing on a well-being, nature, focusing on providing for the family, focusing on uh, enjoying, focusing on health and on, um, you know, normal wealth, whether what we are what we are exposed with social media, and I emphasize the social media so much because, uh, because the information that we are having, that we are bombarded with on a daily basis is just too much, especially for the children. And I mean, for young adult, adults until uh, the age of 14, to be exposed with that much uh, amount of information and with that much uh, different information at the same time simultaneously, you know, our, our brain cannot multitask. It is actually shifting attention from one thing to another that happens extremely fast. Like it, it's so fast that we think we are multitasking. Whether all the success in our life, being that that you want to become a millionaire or uh, you want to become uh, healthy or you want to become peaceful or anything, have a beautiful family, it all determines from our focus. And when our focus is trained, to be shifted from a thing to a thing so fast, it is not easy to sit and focus on one thing uh, at a time. So it's, I'm not sure now which person was this, but I was listening among a lot of, uh, a lot of these business coaching and uh, mindfulness and focusing things that they, uh, they actually interviewed the group of entrepreneurs and one of them was uh, like, all of them were very successful, but this one was a billionaire and I need to find this, this name. And they asked him, what is different with you and the rest of the people here? And what he said, the only difference with me, uh, with me and the rest of the people here is that I can hold my focus for five minutes. Now the five minutes sounds, uh, sounds just a little bit, but imagine that the rest of the people and the average person, can hold focus on one thing for about like three seconds. The average, the rest of the people, they could focus for 10 seconds. This specifically successful man could focus for five minutes. So imagine now with children, I mean, children and us, all of us, when we are constantly bombarded, bombarded especially now spending a lot of times indoor with uh, movies, social media, all of that, we are not even noticing that our thoughts are being fed by these things. Um, even music, the type of music or the, the news in the background, all of it, whatever we are listening, our mind is kind of perceiving subconsciously. And then what is happening, all of these things are affecting our producti product productivity in whatever we are doing. So now why mindfulness is important and how can mindfulness, meditation, breath work, uh, Reiki, or any type of self-care uh, uh, help our focus? In this case, I'm gonna be 
talking about focus on the well-being, on the physical well-being, mental well-being, emotional well-being. Because the moments when we give ourselves uh, any type of self-care, meaning warm bath with Epsom salt. Epsom salt is helping relaxation of muscle, of the whole body. It clears our uh, energy system and it gives us few moments of silence in our mind. If we are doing breathing, like conscious breathing, I mean, you count to three or five to breathe in and count to three to five to breathe out, it is uh, even better to combine the meditation and the uh, and warm, uh, warm bath. Or if you do the stretching, you still implement breathing. So now this is uh, amazing. If you cannot sit and meditate, one of the best practices to do is actually mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is, uh, is basically focusing on what you are doing, focusing on being in the moment, uh, focusing on everything around you. And it can be practiced at every moment in time. Like it can be practiced uh, if you are driving. So this means, it doesn't mean you're gonna doze off. Most of the time when people are driving, you're not even aware how you, where you come from, you know, uh, how you come to the destination where, where you intended to, you don't remember the way because your thoughts were going around then you might not even remember what were you thinking of. Whether if you bring mindfulness into driving, you just focus on your breathing, and also on the road and pay attention on a road while you're breathing and you're very present in a moment with a sight, like not having the radio on, windows up. So it's a very, very, very private moment for you. This makes driving actually very, very fun. It uh, reduces the anger and aggression for uh, the drivers that suddenly, that suddenly pop in front of us because when you are extremely focused, there and when you are in that state of of relaxation while you are driving you're not going to you you will predict this happening so there will be no reason for you to get stressed about it also when you are walking if you do walking in a nature or anywhere when you are focusing on the breathing and breathing deeper than usual as you're walking this is also a part of mindfulness meditation it's a walking meditation so you can walk faster or walk slower and focus notice some uh, some other like let's say some new things on a road where you used to um, go before and the very important thing in anything regarding mindfulness is actually to do the breathing so not as I'm talking now, <laughs> but like do the breathing slowly gently inside three to five six is perfect if you can do it and then also breathe out this is beautiful to be done while cooking while cleaning the house while showering to feel the the water on you to feel the the touches if you're washing the hair if you're walking outside to notice the wind to notice the sensation of the you know ground underneath your feet if you can do this barefoot on the beach, that would be amazing because it helps with grounding. It helps with feeling safe, secure, connected, um, also gives vitamin D. So depending, I'm not saying you do this every day. Uh, what I'm saying is that you can implement so many activities in your life throughout, in your life throughout the day to do them mindfully that uh, there is, I mean, Yes, you can, but it might be even not necessary uh, to do the additional meditation. I would recommend everyone to do it. However, if it is not easy for you in the beginning to sit and focus on breathing and meditate, you can always do a certain action. That's why uh, there is occupational therapy where you're doing craftings with the small things. So you're focusing on this thing and as well combining with breath which makes it, uh, which makes the mind more calm. And when the mind is more calm, the body, the subconscious part of us can actually easily fix how we feel, allow us to feel more relaxed because there is no running thoughts that are giving mixed signals to us. And overall well being is affected immensely in a positive way. A uh, very good tip there is a lot of tips for the mindfulness. A good tip is wait for three seconds before unlocking your smartphone. So like I have mine. So 
if you want to unlock it. Before you do it, close your eyes and just do three breaths inside, out, gentle, and then unlock it. Uh, it will it will also align your mind and your energies because we are kind of doing these things habitually. Like I noticed since I was um, I was in Cambodia for five months. I was stranded due to COVID. I couldn't come back, and I spent so much time in nature uh, for a change. I spent it was all green. Uh, there was no COVID there, and it was completely completely different transformative experience. And when I came here, when I came back here, I noticed it was more, you know, more technology happening, or if I visit someone, or if I spend time with someone, I, I, it, I just noticed it's so, so, so real that later on, if I hear a song, or if I hear something, it keeps repeating in my, in my mind. Before that, we, we, I noticed it only if it was happening very, very, very often. And now I can just, uh, see how much effect of a simple, you know, I'm not saying do not watch TV shows, but let's say how much effect of a simple TV show when you're doing, uh, when you're watching it uh, one after another can have in your mind. So it's not easy anymore to focus towards what you want. It is just saying, repeating the things that it's heard because this is what the most familiar new thing is. So knowing these things about mine, instead of uh, scaring you, uh, because it can be scary, whatever you hear, whatever you, whatever new that you hear, the mind gets engaged with that after some time, knowing these things and using it for your, for you, it is the easiest, easiest way to transform and transfer the way that you experience life, the way that your health is, the way that your, um, mind body state is it is uh, like i do technology detox once a week my dream is to do it three days a week but for now it is once a week and this means i am not like uh, my, my clients my parents my friends they know i'm not touching my phone because the silence and uh, for me it is reading about uh, things that I like and uh, um, making certain making some special meal for me going to the beach or doing something for myself it is very very important for my own well-being uh, especially with the amount of work that I'm doing however it doesn't have to be shutting off completely the, the device it can be turning off the notifications because I noticed that many people have the notifications on for the messages. And what this does, whatever you are trying to, to observe or think or focus on, there is this tiny thing that keeps uh, you know pulling you like, hello, hello, see me, look at me. And the, the smart phones are actually designed that way that they, like everything about smartphone, everything about social media is, de is designed in that way to grab your attention and keep you there. Like, have it, does it ever happen to you that you go on the social media, I don't know, in, on Facebook and Instagram just to check something and you find yourself half an hour or one hour or one and a half or two hours later still there, like because you end up on YouTube and then from YouTube there and then on some web page. And this is the way that the social media works. Hence, waiting for three seconds before unlocking it and turning off notifications when you are doing something important, when you are spending time with someone. A lot of people do not do deep listening or mindful spe speaking. <laughs> like mindful speaking, I think this is my biggest challenge <laughs> because I speak too fast. So the mindful speaking, it should you know, include some more breathing in between, but we all learn throughout, uh, throughout our life. So the deep listening is one of the most neglected and most valuable uh, techniques that we can use and offer to people we care about or care of. And we cannot do deep listening if we are not in that resourceful state, if we are not in a state of peace, alignment with ourselves, because the, the states where we are tired, where we are uh, stressed, where we are angry, are not allowing our mind to be clear from all the suggestions, all the maybe judgments, all the corrections of the other person, while this person only wants to be heard. Because all of us, like throughout the life, 
what what we want is to be loved, accepted, heard. And if all of us felt or were loved, accepted and heard, I don't think there would be any reason for uh, any conflict in the whole world. But a lot of us while listening, we are trying to find a solution for this, or we are trying to correct what is wrong, or we are trying to, I don't know, do our own thing. And it is, um, it is especially, uh, especially challenge with the uh, caregivers. And it is especially challenge with teachers, uh, with coaches, to listen to someone, like look at the person in the eyes, focus on your breathing, focusing on their breathing, and just feeling that love feeling that uh, appreciation, acceptance, feeling the gratitude that this person that is looking at you is actually sharing something very personal, very important, very deep and valuable with you. So the deep listening is uh, in like in Buddhism, they're called this compassionate listening and they find it the biggest, uh, the, the biggest technique in healing. I'm, I'm hearing some uh, noise, I'm not sure. Uh, so they find it the biggest technique in healing because we are listening to someone from the space of love, from the space of uh, joy, without any judgment and without any, any attempt to fix them or to control them. And it's very, very, very good thing if, if parents can do this approach with their children. It will help children opening up it will help children uh, speaking about their issues. It will, it helps overall relationships and the connection. Now doing one thing at a time, I already said there is no multitasking. So we just have this illusion of multitasking and we think that we are very good if we can do uh, a lot of things at the same time. And I am, uh, you know, guilty, guilty or charged. I could do five things at the same time. I thought that was very, that was very good. And I had this huge, biggest score on uh, attention, uh, attention change in a, in a psychology test. And then I spent years of learning to focus on one thing because this is how we are productive and experience something new. Uh, we are so, we are kind of slaves of habits and uh, our subconscious mind works like that, that uh, it is habitual, it likes habits and how we shake it up and how we, we bring ourselves in a moment is when we experience something new. It doesn't have to be something that you need to invest uh, in or, uh, or, or you know, it doesn't have to be a holiday uh, experience. It can be even, I don't know, dancing on a grass outside or, uh, or something that is new, something that will make you feel, uh, you know, more alive and more, 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 more present. And um, something that will show you a new side of you. Now, there is a lot of researches and uh, there, is a, there is clinical trials of actually uh, showing a positive re results on uh, cancer patients when they were uh, doing a regular mindfulness and meditation practice. Uh, there is a, a clinical research with over with 3,500 participants and they all show a very, very uh, big improvement by practicing mindfulness and by practicing meditation because this actually this actually improved their overall well-being, relaxation, their mindset regarding the situation that they are in, uh, meditation, ex meditation practice before surgery made them feel more relaxed, they're more confident if there is a surgery. Uh, it made, uh, in general, focusing on themselves, it made, in general, uh, the whole process of the recovery and for the caregivers uh, more peaceful, uh, more pleasant, and the, the 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 mindset for expecting the positive result, uh, expecting and uh, looking forward to what they will do when they're fully recovered, when they feel even better, was was well showed remarkable results. It is, uh, it is affecting the overall, overall body recovery, mind, uh, 
I would say soul as well. Oh, yes, I did not mention here. Yes. Um, also, it is very important regarding the Reiki or any type of uh, therapy and consultation. It is very important to actually talk to someone who is also professional. Uh, sorry. I will read the, 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 the chat box later on because uh, if there is anything that uh, in a form of question or emergency, please just let me know. The, the Reiki is actually implemented, and I was shocked to, to, to hear this, I am a Reiki master teacher, and a Reiki is implemented in the hospitals in 67% of hospitals in the US. They even have it in schools, and this is a beautiful thing because Reiki is focused on, uh, well, focusing on, on yourself and on self-healing. It helps emotional well-being. It helps uh, every aspect of your life. And it is important. If you would like to know more about this, I will say at the, at the end of the webinar. But what I wanted to mention is that it is important if you, because sometimes people feel like they are burdening people with the condition or with anything. There is a lot of guilt. There is a lot of, um, a lot of shame regarding well, any condition that 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 is not uh, that is not super happy, wealthy, and uh, and good. So when there is a lot of guilt and shame and stress about how how others will see us, how much burden we will be to others, because as I said, we are all used to kind of majority of us are used to helping others, but are not used to being you know being helped or receiving help or accepting help. And then there is a lot of guilt and shame regarding this. It is important to search for, uh, I'm saying it can be on YouTube, it can be many techniques for understanding how to release and let go of these emotions. Or it can also be that you uh, communicate with, uh, with a coach or a psychologist or whoever is there. It can help to talk to someone who is not... Uh, who is not connected directly, being that family, being that friend, because in this way, in this aspect, it's kind of the person feels more um, relaxed, more comfortable with sharing the experience. Hence, more open towards a possible solution, because I want to, uh, to repeat that when we are feeling more relaxed and more comfortable with whatever we are doing or being, we are more open to perceive a possible solution. Now, meditation practice, uh, and it is practice, is a thousand years old practice and it is recently not recently for the past years it has uh, had a huge expansion now they have it even in harvard and uh, large corporations are implementing it with their workers in the beginning of days and basically it is free uh, when you know some techniques, and I will give you some, and you can also you can also uh, find a lot on YouTube videos. You can find a lot of guided meditations. So there is different types of meditation. Initially, initially for people, usually it is easier to follow guided meditation. Why guided? Because the mind is used to hear something, to hear directions. So it is easier to to follow it and to get yourself in a relaxed state by being guided by someone. The meditation can also be the one that most of the time I practice, even though I do the guided one as well, uh, the breath focus meditation. This is a deep relax relaxing and if you don't do it sitting, you might fall asleep, which is good to do before sleep. Meditation is proved to decrease stress, uh, improve concentration, um, to reduce symptoms, anxiety, depression, uh, promotes uh, well-being, uh, attention span, meaning the, the focus, improves memory. Now, the age-related memory loss, they, they as well did, um, did research, uh, like they did a clinical research on patients with dementia, dementia, and basically they shown at least for that short term time because they didn't uh, they didn't uh, do it on a long they didn't do a long study uh, it showed uh, improved memory 
even with those patients. So it proves memory throughout the age uh, and reduces age-related memory loss. It improves sleep definitely. And it's very important to sleep in peace because how we sleep when we are relaxed, we're, when we sleep relaxed, we rest very, very much better. And when we rest better, our whole body regenerates in a easier way. Whether when we sleep stressed, we wake up feeling sluggish or uh, I don't know, like uh, not feeling well, looking like uh, uh, not fresh. So meditating or doing some breathing exercise before sleep or focus exercise, it improves sleep so much. It also helps control the pain. And uh, it is because when we are stressed, when we are in that fight or flight uh, situation, what happens is that aura senses are uh, elevated. And uh, throughout the, the chronic stress, uh, especially when there is anxiety or when there is panic attacks, even slightest uh, sounds become more irritable. Whether when we do the meditation on a regular basis or even when there is pain, when we do our best to focus on a meditation, it reduces the sensitivity for it because we relax overall and we become more comfortable so it uh, it is very 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 powerful technique you can you can um you can try it later on now possible challenges for the self-care besides the ones that we mentioned that like feeling pressures and all of that uh, this one is something that i observed child parent trap we are kind of uh, raised by a parent so as i'm saying we modeled from the parents and then we are kind of in a child mode until we become parents ourselves so when we are in a child mode we are expected to do things and have a lot of expectations um, from our parents or from surroundment or anything and then when we go into a parent mode we become actually uh, focus even more outside. So in neither of this, we are experiencing the, you know, enjoying of the inner child. There is so many responsibilities and the playfulness, relaxation is rarely the option because our whole educational system and the system around us is kind of uh, based on focusing a lot of on achievement. Not all, I think the, the Scandinavian country have a different system. There is no grades and focuses on creative, I mean, in primary school in the first four or five grades. And this focuses on creativity and, uh, and um, developing children's skills. And I think their, their, their rates for children for later on performance are, are amazing. I need, to, uh, I need to recheck that information. Then I can do it alone. As I said, again, uh, we are all raised to be strong women, strong men, powerful, that we, we do every time, our, everything ourselves. Uh, there is a lot of judgments from, judgment from outside and from inside if we do not know how to do something, especially in a corporate world for, world for managers or for anyone who is, or for mothers. This is a big one for mothers. So who, for anyone who is managing more than themselves, it is very challenging to trust or to feel comfortable to give someone else a certain part of their load. And this is a very important thing to, to learn. Now, the, the time management also, because when we are focusing on ourselves and when we are focusing uh, on uh, outside and uh, when we, just a moment, sorry. Sorry, I had a slight disturbance. So for the time management, uh, when we are focusing to, to make everything perfect, uh, to make everything on time, to deliver our work, to del deliver our home obligations, to whatever our errands are, 
it is not easy to decide, okay, I will do 20 minutes of this whole day, 24 hours, I will do 21 minutes for myself. Not even 20 minutes at a time, but five minutes here, two minutes here, three minutes here. And we do not, uh, I again mentioned social media, but a lot of time we do not notice how much more time we spend on the social media. And it's very, very useful to install. There is a tracking application on a phone. So you have this, and I think some of the phones, they already tell you the screen time. So you have exactly how many hours a day you spend on a phone or a computer. And then when you compare this and this 20 minutes, it is kind of uh, very, very, you know, the proof that you can find the 20 minutes on time to focus on yourself. Now the perceived value of it, uh, it takes time to see the benefits. Some of the benefits are, are exactly on us, like as we do it, but sometimes it takes time to see the benefits of, of these practices being that mindfulness, meditation, being that going in a nature and, uh, you know, feeling, making yourself feel better in any way, it takes time. And the perceived, we are learned to get everything fast, you know, fast food, uh, ordering online, especially here in UAE, like you don't need to step out, you can get anything what you want and very fast. Now, if I tell you to do something on a daily basis, two to three minutes, you know, every morning, and then maybe again, like there, it kind of end in 10 days to two weeks, you will see a huge benefit. It's not easy for us to set our mind to do something consequent, you know, for two weeks. So perceived value is kind of uh, also what depends on uh, on what our self-care focus is going to depend on. What do we think we gain from it? And now subconscious mind is habitual and it takes time for new habit. As I said, without the techniques such as NLP, you can, or hypnotherapy or hypnosis, uh, it takes 21 to 40 days or times to do something to install a new habit, meaning, if you start uh, meditating or if you start doing um, mindfulness for three minutes at a certain time, and it's best to do it at the same time, at, at the similar timings, if you want to install a habit, because your body is just going to naturally be prepared for this after 21 or 40 days. Um, so if you want to install this, you would have to do it for every day without skipping it or repeat it 21 times throughout the days, uh, then it becomes much, much more easy to remind yourself and to find value in spending your time this way. Um, however, the subconscious mind likes habits, so this might not be that easy without the reminders. So uh, what I recommend is either a vision board, either writing something as in that you reminder for yourself on the door, wardrobe, on a mirror that you can see very often that reminds you how important this is for you. Or let's say self-care is my expression of self-love or self-care, or let's say meditating two minutes a day, because this can be done as well. Meditating two minutes a day makes my mind more calm. And just having that kind of in front of you reminds your thoughts, remind your mind where to focus on and how this important it is for you, and then helps the installing of these habits on a long run. Now, uh, there is a lack of role models for every one of these. And I'm also uh, one of the examples. This is why I'm mentioning while I used to also teach self-care, self-love, I wasn't that good in doing it all the way because I was focusing too much uh, on work. However, I was lucky that the last year taught me a lot and brought me back to myself. I was, I'm, I'm playing more, I, my, my social connections, my relationships are deeper. I am prioritizing uh, everything, family time. And if the traveling was not this challenging at this point, I think I would take, uh, you know, two to three months off to spend back home with my friends and, and family. But I just got the value and understanding of how much more productive I am in the at work when I'm actually doing things for myself outside of the work, which are not connected to that. So for someone, it can be work. For someone, it can be 
uh, something else. It can be TV. It can be anything that is challenging these self-care routines. Now, so it is very, very, very important to find people who are practicing these things regularly to be inspired by them, to, uh, you know, also uh, if, we, if we go success stories, so whatever you want to achieve, kind of uh, most of the things someone already achieved. And uh, being that success in some area of life, being that, um, you know, success in, in wealth. Uh, and we have all these excuses that it is uh, too late. It, there is, uh, you know, like, I don't know, I'm too old to start this. Um, but if you have a look, majority of people that had a huge breakthrough, it is actually at later uh, time in their life. Also, there is a lot of people that, challenge the the general medicine uh, assumptions right there is there is this amazing lady i think she's 86 at this point and she started to do a triathlon uh, training when she was fa- uh, 48 it's a sister madonna she's uh, she started actually as a part of her spiritual practice to run at 48 and now i think she's done i don't know how many triathlons she's uh, actually uh, you know, collecting the donations like that. And she's 86, I don't know, she broke her hip so many times and uh, recovered. So for her, the doing triathlon, recovering after it, being mindful, praying, it's also a type of self-care and connected also to her purpose and brings her social connection. And she's also, she's very famous and she's inspiring so many, so many people. So if we find these kind of people uh, and how and find out how did they actually achieve which techniques they use to achieve what they did achieve let's say uh, michael jordan used visualization in order to when, like in order to become the best basketball player at that time so the visualization focus on what we want and uh, the techniques that are connected with the mindfulness, meditation, all of that can bring us improvement in any area of our life. So being that well-being, being that wealth, health, mental um, success, each, each and uh, every aspect. So why visualization? I didn't uh, write it anywhere, but I will mention it. Uh, why visualization is so important? Because our body and mind are interconnected. And uh, the, our body, surprisingly, doesn't know the difference in between real and imagination. So whether we think something is true, or whether it is true, our body is reacting the same way. That is why our thoughts are creating our emotions. And then if we are seeing it so vividly, if we close our eyes and if we are seeing it so, so vividly, our mind is actually thinking that this is happening. And this is why the reason, this is the reason why visualization is so powerful healing technique as well in a self-healing, meaning visualizing a certain thing, purifying us or energizing us is creating this purification and energizing inside of our body. And soon we will, uh, we will try this if you are willing to 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 do it with me uh just the last thing being able to ask for help emphasizing again is a strain because actually allowing yourself to well you know admit yourself that you are ready to receive help from others it's yeah, I have a good example. We all like to give presents to make people happy and to do some nice things for people. And when there is someone else that wants to do the same for us, we don't feel that comfortable. You know, while when we are doing this for them, it is enjoyment, it is giving us pleasure, it is giving us satisfaction. And if we just sit for the moment and see that the enjoyment that we feel when we're giving them care is the same enjoyment, same type of enjoyment that they will feel when they take care of us or give us an advice or give us a hand with something. It is it creates this understanding that us not asking for help, us not allowing help is not actually, is taking away this feeling of satisfaction 
of someone else. So I think that uh, not asking for help I can actually be selfish at some time. And this, uh, I will be doing a mindfulness meditation activity. If there is no any questions, I will show a simple technique that you might do. It is um, understanding how sometimes alignment of our body and a pressure points and a certain positions can help overall relaxation. So this one, I would like all of you to do, I mean, together individually. Basically, I think everyone did this as a child before, spontaneously. You put left hand over the right hand like this, and then if you can do it like this and put it on your heart and then close your eyes and just focus on breathing. So you breathe in and follow your breath, hold it for the moment and then breathe out and do this four, five, 10 times, breathe in slowly, gently. And then hold it for the moment and breathe out at your own pace. Still focus on breathing in and breathing out. And this is something very simple that you can do anywhere, at your work, in a car, on a signal. And if you are still there, still one more time, breathe in. Beautiful. Now I am not sure how much time we have. The activity that I wanted to do was 15 minutes, but this you can do quite a lot. So you do it left over right like this, and uh, you can do the same with feet down, left over right. I mean, not the same, like the, across the legs, and then focus on the breathing as you are sitting. And it relaxes your, your whole mind and body when you do it for some time. So because we are limited with time, I mean, I'm limited with, with time, I would like to thank everyone who were attended, who attended. And also if you, thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Uh, if you would like to receive Thank you so much. I'm now reading the, the chat. I think you can see that. Uh, if you would like to receive any like actual exercise, I will record it for you later, later today. And whoever shares the email with me, there is here, yes, yes Mina Evolve Life, or you can uh, write on my Instagram or you can, um, let me return, sorry. You can write on my Instagram and I will send you the access to the beautiful. So there is Instagram here. It's Evolve Lifestyle Coaching. Uh, I think this is the easier way for you to send me your email. And you can also follow me because I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of promotional activities and I will be also doing some uh, webinars in, uh, in the future. So if you would like to send me here, oh yes one thing. If anyone is interested, just to mention the Reiki, because I'm a Reiki master teacher. And uh, for uh, friends of cancer patients, if anyone from recovering patients or from uh, 
anyone who is who has any will to do the the self healing i am open to lead the webinar online which will be free of charge however no certification so this would be two days event and uh, it will be free for anyone who are willing to learn more techniques how to actually help them feel better and for the self healing if you are interested in this uh, you can Beautiful, uh, Sarah, if you don't mind, because I can see this, just send me the message on the Instagram, and then I will make sure to, to answer it there. Beautiful, thank you. So for this suggestion, I just got uh, I just got inspiration in the in like beginning of the webinar, so I didn't manage to share it with, with, um, with the organizers, but I am willing to do this uh, free webinar for self-healing for the cancer patients and recoveries uh, and but without the certification because this one I need to uh, as well I need to pay for so for my teaching and for actual actual learning I am willing to but it would be the webinar and it would be two days so we would make it two to three hours one day and two hours the next day it has to be consecutive two days in a in a row so if anyone is interested, you can contact the uh, Friends of Cancer patient, or you can contact me directly, and then I will manage and organize the groups, and uh, we can arrange everything. Now, if anyone has, thank you so much, Dr. Lai. If anyone has any questions or any other uh, comment, I think I took a lot of time. Ah, okay, I can now see. I can now see the question from Maria for the tra treatment is painful. Okay, so for, okay. So if you don't mind, Maria, just uh, please send me, the, send me the Instagram message and then I will send you this uh, general, uh, general recording for the relaxation meditation, but I will also, uh send like give you some techniques uh, privately if you wish like a shorter version what you can do to prepare if this is uh, okay with you how to shift your mind i'm reading the i think you can see that i'm reading the chat yes please so just uh, send me the message on instagram and i'm there for you to to respond and later on today i will record this uh, session i mean to be audio so i can send it for you and then you will have it and you can listen you can listen through to it for any time that you would like to uh, relax your relax yourself or experience meditation i think we finished i'm not sure mr Maj I'm waiting just to get the information from the organizers as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Jasmine. Uh, you, you really have what addressed a very important topic actually for our cancer patients. And survivors, thank you all for the attending, uh, for your patience and time, and your efforts. Uh, important webinars that many people have benefited from uh, your um, uh, topic. And uh, yeah, whoever wants to contact Ms. Jasmina, I have just uh, posted the uh, website for Ms. Jasmina and the Instagram for uh, her direct contact. Um, again, uh, thank you so much, Ms. Yasmina. Is there any additional comments or key advices for the attendees that you would like to share before any today's webinar? What would it be? Well, key advice would be to treat yourself as your best friend. Because a lot of us, we are much, much better towards others with giving advices and everything. And much, much more, we give much more of ourselves to our best friends or family members. So every time when you are about to do something or react to something or not do something, prevent yourself to do something, just ask yourself, what would the most beautiful, loving version of me 
do? Or how would I actually advise the, my best friend to, you know, to behave in this situation? So treat yourself as your best friend. Sorry. Thank you, Mohammed. I'm getting now distracted because the, 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 the chat is open. Treat yourself as your best friend and practice to do something beautiful for yourself tonight. I would like that everyone who, who send me the, the email, it would be amazing if everyone would do something for like a minute or two, something beautiful for themselves, whatever it is. It can be eat an apple. If you haven't had a fruit for like uh, for some time, you know, it can be a very, very simple thing. So if I would receive an email, right, and then something beautiful that you did uh, for yourself after this webinar or something that you were inspired to do, I don't know, take a 10 minutes walk if you if you can. I think it's a darker it's, it's dark now. So just let me know. I think that is, that is it. That's a very important advice. And I really like that, uh, you know, people just need to focus on their own selves at times, even if when they are surrounded with stressors or sometimes they are overwhelmed with daily uh, tasks. Uh, it's really important to just sit back and lay down and think about uh, what you are doing right now and get focused. Uh, and I think you provided some important tools today for our attendees. And uh, I personally personally get benefit, uh, some benefited advices from you today. So thank you so much. And until next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.